Okay, today's project on this cold wintry day is to build or at least start building the um, aviator model from U Gears. I got this one because it reminded me of the old toys they used to have. Not that I was around then, but um, you know, in the 40s and so on, where they would have a tower for children to play with. It usually looked like a radio tower or maybe an airport beacon tower, and then there would be a metal rod sticking off to the side. There'd be some little biplane with a spinning propeller, and it would just go around in circles. And I always thought later that those looked pretty dumb and uh, you know kind of boring after the first couple minutes but it's the kind of thing where you know a young enough kid would probably really get a kick out of it at least for a while and U Gears has done that better by making this elaborate contraption with a joystick and uh, a wind-up motor and the tower and the horizontal rod and then there's a little uh, biplane model on it that goes around and around and there are linkages in the tower controlled by the joystick that uh, allow you to to some degree manipulate the model as it goes around and according to the box it also has a helicopter that you can attach and detach the two different types of uh, model aircraft I've had fun building these U-Gears kits before. I expect this one to be just as much fun. And it, the results usually end up looking kind of cool and I try to find some sort of place to display them. So here's the uh, fine print, wooden mechanical model, collector's model, series 70, model aviator, well scale 100 to 1. It's hard to say what the scale is but uh, made by Ukrainian Gears LLC, that's U Gears. Manufactured in Kiev, Ukraine. Age 14 plus, well, I guess I qualify. Contains sharp points. Model for self assembly without glue. Made of plywood and rubber. And as usual with these, you just get a, a brick of laser cut plywood pieces and usually a very large and elaborate uh, detailed illustration or manual with detailed illustrations, I should say. And then there are also a couple of smaller bricks, probably for the two types of aircraft, I'm guessing. Big pile of rubber bands, small ones and large ones. The inevitable toothpick packet that are used for uh, making axles of various sorts. The little pack, uh, little square of fine sandpaper that you use to deburr the various parts. A paper clip, Ukrainian paper clip and then a little bit of uh, wax that is used as a lubricant for bearing surfaces. So, all the parts seem to be there. Quick overview of the uh, plywood parts. A lot of them have uh, certain pieces already removed, but these are all laser cut, very fine, precise cuts. All those black lines are actually cuts that go all the way through the wood and then they're just tiny little interstitial points. I don't know if I can even point with them out. Um, there's one there just by the tip of my thumbnail. You can just barely see the little link that goes across the gap. Little white link. So these are fairly easy to punch out but they stay put uh, until you want to punch them out. Here's an example. I can push this part out and it'll pop out pretty easily. So there's one sheet, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, and eight in addition to these little pieces here. And here is the manual. You can also scan the QR code and uh, get a, a virtual manual that you can display on a iPad or notebook computer or whatever desktop computer screen instead of using the printed manual. And of course that's more likely to have updates on it but um, I never have anything handy like that when I build these things, so I'll just use the printed manual. Um, in English, German, French, Polish, Spanish, Italian, uh, was that Turkish, Russian, Korean? So, um, <clears throat> very little text is required. There are the usual you know, instructions. Remove model parts from the hanger board as illustrated. Be careful not to break the parts. If part does not remove easily, carefully cut it out with a knife. Models intended for self-assembly without glue. If you have difficulty installing the axles, try waxing them with a regular candle. All moving parts can also be waxed during assembly to reduce friction when operating the model. Um, so then they show the icons. <clears throat> you can use a candle to wax some of the parts. They caution you about some sharp points, probably all from the toothpicks, because there's no sharp metal points. There are no metal points, period. When it shows that, it says to wax the part with a regular candle. You can rub with a candle. Um, and uh, that tells you to break off or cut uh, the toothpicks usually. Pay attention. Check the mechanism for smooth and correct mov movement. Operate the mechanism to seat the parts in their positions. And this one says, perform the same steps in a mirror image. Sand to remove burrs. And then sometimes they'll have spare parts and they have an icon for that. Then they give you a tool on one of the sheets. It's not a structural component. It's a tool for measurement and assembly. And there's the little tool they talked about. So I just punched that out. Put my fingers. And there's the little tool that has um, a scale on it. It's not um, marked what it means, but presumably when you need to use it, they'll tell you. It has the little hole in the end, which is probably used in some way regarding the toothpicks. I'll find that out later. And then it has the poker, which you can use to push small parts out of the boards. Just to illustrate how easily these pieces come out of here, here's a piece I'm taking out. Well, this one's a little harder because it's on the edge of the board. I have to support it a little bit more so I don't pop adjacent pieces out of the board. There, came out pretty well. And then I need to get, the illustration shows me in, in colors all the parts I need to break out of here for the next step. There's one, two, three, four, those guys, they're all identical. I need to get four of these little guys out, so that's where this tool comes in handy. Actually, I can just break out this whole 
a tab for a little easier, a little easier access to those particular parts. Here's another board I can break out for convenience. I need two of these. Have to be a little more careful with these because there's pretty narrow parts there. So I want to push right where the interstitials are to minimize stress on the rest of it. And I need four guys from this little piece. These are all like bearings and bearing blocks. There's those little pieces. And I need to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these pieces. I think of these as the cotter keys. They're little wedges you push in to lock other pieces in place. That's all the parts I need for that step. So I start off by pushing four of these little wedges into holes in this piece and they just snap in there. And the instructions then tell me to take two toothpicks and cut them in half. And there's that. I just use a razor blade like this or sometimes my exacto knife and then I start four toothpicks in from the bottom and it looks like I have to push them all the way down like that And I place that in here, but it's too big to go through the hole, actually. It's a little bit oversized. That's apparently deliberate. And if it was supposed to go in, then they would tell you to put wax on it so it would be lubricated. Now, this little piece has been sanded lightly to remove burrs, and then I've rubbed the included wax around the outside as a lubricant. And this piece just sits down between the toothpicks and the uh, four wedges. So it's not sitting inside a round object, it's sitting in between a total of uh, eight other objects. Then I'm supposed to take another one of these and push it down over the toothpicks. Up next is to make little roller bearings out of these parts. So they need to have their little interstitial burrs sanded off lightly and they need to be waxed. So this is the kind of thing you see in these U-Gears kits. They needed a roller bearing, so I've got these four bearings on toothpicks, and then I've got this middle part I put in earlier, um, which sits in between those and the outer race made out of this part. So, you know, it should rotate in there. Whoops, I'm going to push it all apart if I'm not careful. And then I put this other piece over the top and push it down. And then use the razor blade to cut off all the um, toothpick extensions there. Like that. And hopefully, if I stick this tool in here, let's see if I can do it the other way. 
yeah, the whole thing turns. I just don't have the right um, right object to stick in there to turn it properly. Maybe a popsicle stick. Yeah. So that's working. And it's working fairly freely, especially once I turn it a little bit to get the wa excess wax rolled out of there. Yeah, it's turning really easily now. And these pieces are pushed on the end. They don't turn on there, but I suspect this whole assembly will turn because the outer sides of these are uh, waxed. Then the instructions say make another one just like it out of these other parts. I'm going to continue to show some detail but I'm not going to be showing as much detail on the step-by-step -step because a lot of the processes I've already shown apply to things over and over. So I'm going to show just to keep things reasonably brief, um, more steps on a macro level. Oh, there were a few more parts I'd failed to punch out. Got them now. Oops, built that one backwards. Need to fix that one. I think I got the other ones right. Yep, got to fix that one there. These have made up little ball and socket arrangements, so I can pivot these all around. And there's uh, the other piece with um, somewhat shorter arms than the first one.
I just completed the arduous process of waxing all the gear teeth. You can see what a mess I've made. <laughs> um, they recommend just rubbing a piece of wax into the teeth. I don't know how you're actually supposed to do that on uh, the steam locomotive of kit of theirs. There's lots and lots of gears and um, they always show you know rubbing a little a uh, bit of a tooth tip of a toothpick in some wax and rubbing it around on the gears that just doesn't work in my experience so what I usually do is I get a candle that's burning and hold it so it just drips wax all over the teeth and then I go through with the back side of a exacto knife blade and um, just carve out all the excess wax or most of it and then when the gear is actually put into mesh with other gears then it conforms the wax as necessary but right now it looks kind of ugly there's a bunch more of those little bearings or roller bearings they've all been sanded and waxed Yeah, I'm not sure I can illustrate this. I think I should probably wax the outside of this big wheel too. So this is rolling on those uh, roller bearings that I did in the previous couple of steps. can't get much of a grip on it. But that all rolls in there. It's got those roller bearings in there and the other roller bearings that are just about invisible down there.
So these are all um, some sort of adjustment knobs. Each one is aligned with the little pulley that's in there. Which is in turn aligned with a hole. And I suspect what we're going to find down the road uh, is that rubber bands come in from the top and pass through there, go around the pulley, and then um, hook onto one of these and then get wrapped around this low, uh, low spot. And I don't know if I can demonstrate this here. Here's a typical one. Because of the little um, cutout that was shown earlier, and with the internal gear that's um, inside this piece of wood here, these actually have detents. Well, this last stage was by far the most difficult part of this assembly. Um, it appears that I got the tower inner assembly rotated 180 degrees from where it should have been relative to the outer tower assembly. And I don't know. Um, I tried to see if I could undo various parts of it and there was just no way. Too many of these parts that snap together, you can't get them apart again without breaking them. <clears throat> so I had to say, well, it's going to be 180 degrees out. That may result in something like if you push the stick forward, the thing tilts backwards or something. I don't really care. I don't really expect it to work very much. Um, actually, the reputation of the, a lot of these U Gears kits, including the uh, the couple I have that are rubber band powered, it kind of works, but you better not count on it working real smoothly because uh, there's just uh, a lot of friction in it. And even if you do everything, you know, as perfectly as you know how, following the instructions, it's just right on the hairy edge of not working. So it's you really got to view it as something that's just there to look at and hopefully this will do something <laughs> but um, the, the most difficult part really was getting all three of these tower elements which fan out at the bottoms each one of those has like four different wedge pins that have to align with this base plate and that was just not happening as soon as I get some of it aligned, the rest of it would pop out. And I'm going around and around, cussing and <laughs> fuming, and um, all three of these long pieces that stick through, which are part of these entire long rails, uh, they're double wedged, and um, so they're very fragile where they go through. And every time something would let loose, those would bend a little bit more, and sure enough, they all snapped off. So what I've done is I've used lots of super glue and accelerant to try to reattach them. I'm not sure how important they are at this stage. Um, if they are really important, then I'll just have to live with the consequences. But yeah, that could have been done a lot better. It's, they needed something that would make that go better. And all these rubber bands get pulled up through there like I expected they would and over their little pulleys and then around their winches. This one needs to be adjusted yet. Yeah, more like that.
it's a planetary not a planetary gear but um, I'm turning the uh, punch-out tool more times than the outer race is turning these are all waxed bearings in there tediously waxed have to turn them until they move freely which they're doing now and the teeth have been waxed on this Okay, I'm not at all confident that this is going to work very well. <laughs> oh, geez. So, um, if I turn this gear here, then the whole top should turn. Well, it is turning. The uh, torque is getting through. And the little gear on the end turns. That'll be what turns the propeller on the airplane. At least if everything's aligned straight, the torque's able to get through. I dare say that when things start tipping a little bit, it'll probably have more um, more friction. All three of those pieces snap together with uh, joints like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven rubber bumpers. Okay, these long rails were snapped in across the joints that were made previously. Obviously, they're stiffeners, strengtheners.
So I'm very concerned about these three pieces here and the one that's in the back, of course. All of these snapped off right here where it's incredibly thin. It's a dual snap through piece. I've never seen U Gears do this. I think it was a bad idea. Um, bad design to do it this way. This is a bearing here and this is a bearing down here. They're separated and supported only by these three little pieces. And then there's this gear at the end of that bearing which has to drive the entire shaft of the tower and the entire complex at the top, including the airplane. And I just have a gut feeling these are going to break. I, I did super glue the snot out on them, but that's not the same as having actual wood fibers go through there. So I've pried off two of the supports to give me a little more access. And I have a piece of scrap craft plywood. That's uh, about, um, it's only three plies, but it's a good quality craft plywood. And this is about three millimeters thick. It's not that dissimilar from the thickness of the pieces in the U Gears kits. Um, let's see. Now these are also like three and a half millimeters, so it's it's in the same ballpark. And I'm gonna cut some little triangles and then just glue them in there um, just for a little extra strength before I put this whole assembly permanently together. So those are all in there now.
So this is a kind of a tricky part here. Looks pretty involved. Let's see how hard it actually is. This is a uh, kind of a planetary gear arrangement it looks like. Or a planetary bearing rather. If that makes any sense. These are the inner bearings, these are the outer bearings, these are the axle stops, and these are the frames. And these are spacers in between. A small bearing goes on there. And then we add the outer bearing for that. Fits on like that. Then, instead of putting on the small bearing, because if we did the next small bearing, we'd never get the, the outer bearing around it, so we start with the outer bearing, kind of like that. And then we put the middle part in. It's tricky to get that aligned, but... Um, second one's in there now. So like that. And then we pass this other assembly with the gear on it that was made previously. And push on one of these spacers. Kind of like that. And uh, then we push in one of these uh, stops here. So, um, presumably there will be more support for this at the end, because this end is still kind of floating funny.
have to make sure this goes on the right way. The sawtooth should be coming down in that direction and going up in that direction, so I think I've got it right. The ratchet won't allow me to turn it to the right, but I can turn it freely to the left counterclockwise. So to turn this counterclockwise, then it's going to wind these rubber bands up. And probably that's being held by the brakes, which are currently on. I think if I pull up on this, something might happen. Nothing. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, I was wondering if there was going to be some sort of a gotcha from having that part of the tower reverse that I mentioned earlier. Um, this pivot pillow block piece here anchors into here, and its mate on the other side is wider and also has these two, uh, wherever we're at here, these two mounting holes here and here into which snap these pieces 
well, the way it got assembled backwards, I think everything else is pretty symmetrical, but these guys don't have anywhere to go on this side, and these tabs here are too close together. So, how can I fix this? I'm thinking I just get out the Dremel tool and cut these tabs off and make sure this pillow block is glued in with super glue um, and then make a couple of new blocks that replace these guys and just glue right onto the bottom of this big round piece here. Then drill a new hole through that goes into this piece and mount it that way. That's the only way I can think of, of salvaging this. Well, hopefully that'll hold. Now for what I think is going to be the helicopter. For four pieces? Three pieces of wood in here. Oops.
right, I was wondering what this mechanism was for. Turns out it's a spring loadable counterweight that uses coins. So you stick a quarter in there, push it down, and you keep pushing in one and then like this I have several quarters loaded in there to get it to balance. And then this little clip goes back on here. Presumably to keep the coins in place. Then these swash plate tensioners, which are uh, ratcheted, are uh, cranked up. Let's see, where are they? Yeah, down there. To get the swash plate to sit pretty level on both axes. Then we pull the engine control lever back until it clicks into position. That applies the brake to the spring motor. Then I'm supposed to turn this about uh, 25 half turns. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So this planetary system down here really twists these rubber bands up a lot. And then we're supposed to adjust the uh, engine RPM knob. It's currently set to 150, which is the maximum speed, so I want to crank this down to something a little bit lower. So the joystick just changes this. So if I push forward, the helicopter nose is down. If I pull back, the helicopter nose is up. If I go left, it goes this way. Now all I should need to do to make this work, if everything is functioning, is pull up on the throttle lever. Looks like it's trying to work. It's almost doing it. I've cranked it up a bit more than it's supposed to go. I'm worried about something snapping now. Oh. <laughs> It tried to go.
Well, <laughs> it sort of works. It worked better than I thought it would. If I just keep turning the motor by hand, then I can fly the helicopter around. And now we'll build the biplane model. See if I can do this adequately here. It's 
it's nice that they bothered to put in a eccentric mechanism to make the pistons move up and down. That's pretty cool. This is the weird thing about this. Just when the prop spins freely, these uh, uh, wires on the wings, made out of rubber bands, have to crisscross the actual shaft for the motor, which puts a lot of drag on it. Now, maybe it's not that much different from the drag from all the mechanisms on the helicopter. I'm guessing that's deliberate. Well, if it's too much, I can just cut those off, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> 